Whenever I go photo shooting, we usually go to the same big park near us that has about five or six different hiking trails and a lot of really cool stuff, or sometimes to the little park that's across the river from downtown Louisville that I showed in my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K review. And I love taking picture of na pictures of nature stuff and things like that. I'm not a big people shooter just because I guess I'm not a big people person. But whenever I go, I try to, since I've basically you know shot everything normally already, I try to either take a different kind of lens or a couple lenses or focus on a different kind of shooting whenever I go just to challenge myself more and take it a little further. So we ended up going on an impromptu trip to that park this week and I ended up taking the good old Canon 100mm L lens f2.8 USM IS blah blah blah. Their macro L lens that's 100mm. This thing is a beast. I've had it since about November or December-ish, I picked it up on sale. It was a Black Friday or Cyber Monday sale uh, to pair with my Ursa Mini Pro because I knew that I wanted a you know normal macro lens and I've been using it in video shoots from time to time. I haven't made a big deal about it or talked about it before because mostly people know what macro is for the most part. It, it, it's not like it's a new lens or anything, but I've been challenging myself to make more videos that are just kind of like this where I'm just talking about what I'm using because y'all seem to really enjoy it. So I went shooting with my 6D Mark II and the 100 millimeter f2.8 L lens. And my goal was to focus on the little things. I've already focused on the paths and the leaves and things like that and did a lot of cool shooting back in the fall that I ended up printing a lot of for my uh, grandma to frame on her walls and stuff. She fell in love with the shots and things like that. And some of the shots I got with this, she ended up claiming that, you know, putting little tags on them that she wanted prints to be able to swap out in her frames. But I was really impressed with some of the shots I got. Like I mentioned, I focused on the little stuff. So, I, you know, it, it is still very early spring, so not a whole lot is blooming yet, but the, you know, the little buds that are starting to bloom, texture stuff, I'm super huge into texture shots. Um, just whatever little stuff I could find. I kept trying to find bugs, but I couldn't get them like in focus in time. And that was a big issue I ran into this lens. So this lens is really cool. It is a hundred millimeter focal length and this is a full frame camera. So I get the normal hundred millimeter focal length F 2.8, which is what I kept it at most of the time, which was part of my problem. And then it has image stabilization built in, which is super handy. I had no shaky cam syndrome in my pictures or anything like that. The stabilization is really nice and it's even helpful on my Ursa. It's got autofocus or manual focus, of course, but then it's got an extra uh, slider here to lock the autofocus into a certain range so that or so that you don't focus out of a certain range if you know roughly how close you are to your subject. So you have the full focusing range, which is 0.3 meters to infinity, and then you have 0.5 meters to infinity if you only want up to so close, and then you have 0.3 meters to 0.5 meters for stuff that's really up close. And this lens has a minimum focusing distance of 11 point something inches which a lot of people get wrong in that that minimum focusing distance is from the sensor, which is like right here in the camera, not from the tip of the lens. So you only have to go out a few inches from the lens to start focusing on stuff. And that being said, about half of the shots that I got, I took about 160 or so photos that uh, was, was back on Monday from the day that I'm recording. And about half of them that I took ended up out of focus because I was trying to get, it was a super windy day. I was trying to get photos of little, you know, plants and they kept swaying back and forth and I couldn't get the focus right. And as everyone knows at this point, I think the 60 Mark II's focusing point system is not at all super great, which is why the mirrorless RPs and stuff are taking out at some point. I would love to swap my 60 Mark II over to the new EOS R and see how it, that handles. I don't have the budget for anything right now. Um, and so about half of what I took ended up out of focus, but the stuff that I did get in focus or that I got, you know, close enough in focus to actually showcase, I am blown away by. Now keep in mind, my expectations are fairly low. I'm not a professional photographer. Technically, I'm a professional product videographer since that is my job. But you know, I am an enthusiast. I'm a hobbyist. I, photography is my hobby. It's not my job. I'm learning it as I go. I'm not an expert. And so for me, these shots ended up feeling super impressive, even if for other people, maybe they're not. But there is also the advantage that macro shots make everything look good. That's kind of what I wanted to showcase out of this video as I went and I took pictures of everything. My wife and uh, someone else were walking through the path. And so I just kind of kept stopping. I ended up getting a tick stuck in me that we discovered the next day, which was unfortunate because we didn't take bug spray. But you know, 
I was stopping and taking pictures of everything. So there were some like fire pits. And so I was getting really cool pictures of the little charcoal that was left in the fire pits. There were the little portable camping grills and I was getting pictures of those grill bars. I really liked how that turned out. Textures of wood, of nails, uh, some rust on some metal. And then like I mentioned, trying to get the little plants. And so I got little budding flowers and some moss growing on the rocks. I got a really cool picture of a puddle that I think turned out really cool. I tried to do focus stacking with it and it ended up not turning out so well with focus stacking. So just the one picture turned out. And then uh, something I kept trying, I had the lens hood on this lens, so I could not really recreate any flaring and I kept trying to take it off. So I didn't, I couldn't figure out what the flaring was like in this lens because I kept the lens hood on it because for a lot of my shots, I didn't want flaring. But I ended up experimenting with shooting some of the cool little budding pink flowers that are purple flowers that are growing on the little branches that haven't started to bloom yet, shooting up towards the sky where they're backlit and getting some cool shots. And there is one that sticks with me a whole heck of a lot. It's colored a little weird, but I think it really works for this since the subject is in the shadow and thus it's darker. The kind of flaring and the cast that the sun gives and the blown out bits, the bokeh, looks super swirly and smooth, kind of like a watercolor painting. And this stands out a whole lot to me. And it's like one of my favorite shots of it, just because it looks so abstract for something that I actually did fairly minimal post editing on. You know, I edited the colors a little bit in the contrast, but I didn't do anything to make it look like this. This is how it looked out of camera in terms of the blown out bits. And I think it's really cool because I am in a Facebook group for vintage and retro lens enthusiasts that focus on having weird, you know, they take really, really old lenses and they adapt them to modern cameras and show how they can get really weird and cool or quirky, you know, bokeh bits that are, that make things look like watercolor paintings or make things super, look super abstract and more artsy than realistic. And there's a lot of really cool stuff that people do, but these lenses end up costing hundreds of dollars because they're niche kind of collector's things. And I was able to create something like the pictures that I've seen in those groups with just a standard lens. It's an L series lens. It's actually my first L series lens, by the way. I really need the 24 to 70 for some shooting both on my Canon and my Ursa, but I can't afford it right now, but it is my first L lens and I am blown away by that fact. So yeah, I was really impressed with the what I was able to do with the backgrounds. And then I got some cool shots of, unfortunately, a dead caterpillar centipede thing. Like I said, texture shots, some cool shots of water, but again, focus wasn't entirely perfect, but I think it turned out kind of neat regardless. And then some of these, I was struggling to really find the right color for it. And the sun was super harsh at this point. This was like right before it started setting. So it was like right at that really weird, super bright point. But these little dirt clumps are actually ant hills. There were a whole bunch of different ant and like spider hills and things like that. And since this lens is can go up to one to one macro, like this is, you know, a real replication of how it would look in real life if you got right up on top of it. And it was super cool to see them so blown up on the camera from the lens and see them so up close. Again, it was hard to get focus because I was swaying back and forth. The grass was swaying back and forth in front of them. But I think the end result turned out pretty neat, even if they're not like stunning photographs. Just getting to see that in general was really freaking cool. So. Oh, and the spider. I forgot about the spider there. Uh, we were sitting talking at some picnic tables and there was a point where I wasn't involved in the conversation anymore. So I just walked around looking for stuff to shoot and I found a little spider uh, walking around on its on its web. And I was having a lot of trouble getting the lighting right to shoot it initially, but I got that really cool one with the blue background. And then what I ended up doing for the darker ones was I actually put the sun or, you know, the spider between me and the sun which is clearly something I was experimenting with a lot during this shoot. And so I was able to backlight the spider to get more brightness to the spider and without having a bright background because it was just kind of the table that was in the background. So you get a kind of weird highlight on the web itself and then the spider is totally lit on this black background. And again, it was like impossible even if it was sitting still for me to focus on this thing. And then every time the wind blew it, like, you know, the folk, you know, I'm, I'm macroed in enough that every, every tiny, like I could blow on it and the, web would bounce around enough that it'd completely leave the field of view of the lens. So that was definitely a challenge and I just kind of took a lot and I put it into continuous shooting so I could just like hope that one of them was in focus. But I got some pretty cool shots with that and I was super stoked. And overall, like this is a phenomenal lens. I bought the macro lens to use with video shooting because I wanted up close product shots since I shoot a lot of tiny products like this. I need to be able to like shoot the little details and things like that. And I wanted something that I could get up on it. And so this has been my first like f officially macro lens 
that I've used. I showcased the uh, the Laowa 14 millimeter shift, or yeah, it's a shift lens that is also a macro lens because you can get up real close on it. And then I have my 35 millimeter Nikon that I treat as a macro lens because you can focus right up on the lens, do some really cool stuff. Um, and then I have a new lens that I've picked up since this that is a reversed lens. So you get like, like it's like super blown up macro. You only get like the texture of like a coin or something like it's that close and ridiculous. And then I have like macro extension tubes and things like that. But this is the first one that I have that's like formally a macro lens like this. The Laowa one I got after this one. Uh, and I, like I said, I mainly use it for video. This is my first time really taking it shooting for photos and I am blown away. So I just wanted to share this with you and my experiences with this just to talk about some of the gear that I'm using and the kind of creative stuff that I'm doing on the hobby side versus the job side. Uh, I want to share more of this kind of stuff with you all. But I also want to challenge you to just kind of go take pictures but specifically focus because something I always struggle with whenever people talk about like improving your photography, you just need to go shoot stuff. So I run out with my normal like 24 to 105 kit lens because that's the most versatile and aim to shoot stuff. And then I'm like, eh, this is boring. But if you take a specific lens that is, you know, niche or more focused and focus on getting a specific type of shot, and that's all you focus on at the cost of passing up literally everything else, you're going to challenge yourself to get not only more creative shots and more different shots, but just shots that you never thought you'd actually get. And it sounds really silly at first. Like I've always rolled my eyes at this advice about just go shoot and blah, 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 especially because I don't think I have anything interesting near me. I don't live near any crazy landscapes or anything like that. So I can't do the typical like travel lifestyle vlogger stuff because there's nothing interesting to show. But if you take a different perspective with you and force you to learn that perspective, ooh, it is a lot of fun. So. If you're interested in buying them, of course, I do have affiliate links to the lens in the description down below. I don't expect anyone to initially do so. And again, it's not like it's a new lens that you haven't heard of, but I wanted to share my thoughts. And like I said, hopefully at some point in not too far of a future, I can try out the EOS R versus my 6D because I hear that it fixes a lot of the complaints that I have with it. Let me know what you think about this and all the photos and stuff in the description below or in the comment section down below in the description below. I'll have links, as I mentioned to that, uh, to my other lens and, you know, photography related videos, as well as to my Flickr page where you can see the weird samples. I know I'm terrible at picking like a portfolio. I always have been. And so I put a lot of stuff that aren't the best in there and I just forget to post stuff to it in the first place because I get too distracted with doing actual stuff. So. Oh, that will be there. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and sometimes dives and in, dives into production gear and things like that. I'm Eagles Vox. I'll see you next time.